Welcome to episode eight of World War Zero, the most highly anticipated episode. You know I saved the best for last. This is the Peace Dealer, and I would like to introduce to you the fixed axis of love. This is the most important axis, all right, as a mutable sign. You know, you may hear some people say, no, it's the mutable signs, because we're like, after all the fixed in the cardinal. But the fixed axis of the zodiac, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, you all represent like the destination, like where the cardinal sign travels through experience with the mutable signs they arrive at the fixed sign. Now, one thing I will say about this is that we call this the fixed axis of love, but the occult term for this fixed axis of the zodiac is the fixed axis of currency. So all these signs represent worth and value at different levels. Taurus, of course, representing value that's real, that you can quantify. Money, gold, assets that you can realistically liquid, li liquidify. And then you have Leo, currency that comes in the form of creativity and the heart. Love is what I like to call it which is ironic because all four of these fixed signs represent love. And then Scorpio represents currency opposite of Taurus. So Taurus represents the money. What do you spend money on for that feeling, for whatever you want? If you purchase something, you're purchasing it to get it, but there's a feeling ascribed to it. There's something deeper, right? So on the surface level, Scorpio is opposite that, representing other people's values and how you, you share those values, whereas Taurus represents your regular values, right? But I'm just going to tell you, Scorpio is the currency of sex. What's the oldest, oldest occupation in the world? Prostitution. So this is a, a astro secret here. The reason why that is, is, this isn't really the oldest reason why that's the oldest profession like you shouldn't really even have to read between the lines it just makes perfect sense but scorpio represents the value that you place on your sexual experience and organs when they say you shouldn't have sex for free that's taurus opposite that you know what i'm saying um it, it's kind of twisted because people accepting money for sex it's seen as like a low thing, like a prostitute thing, but it's actually astrologically sound. Like before anyone has sex with you, they have to offer up the Taurus equivalent, a gift. It doesn't always have to be money. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't always have to be taking someone out, but to, to actually have sex properly, like you always have to offer up something to the woman's womb. And even the other way around, like, since these are more feminine, it's going to go from masculine to feminine, but you, you always have to compensate. That, that's a very important premise that a lot of people, you will not hear that from. So when you think about prostitution being the oldest occupation in the world, it, it, you know, it, it's not really far off to say it derives from these occult principles. But then we have Aquarius which is the highest octave of love, which we'll get to, and it's cosmic universal love. This is honestly the currency of friendship. So maybe you might not have any money, but if you have strong Aquarius, your currency is in friends. You, you know a lot of people, and even if you don't have money, they all take care of you. You're a good friend to them. They'll, they make sure you're okay. They help you get stable because what's the fourth house of Aquarius? Taurus. So let's get into this. Taurus, like I said, is real love. Yeah, y'all thought I wasn't going to come back with the World War Zero crack? I'm going to talk some smack right now. 
because guys, the, I had to take you through the axis of astrology. Did you notice? Did you notice when we started in World War Zero? I, I got really in. I frazzled your minds. I was all talking about double agents. And I know a lot of y'all are, are waiting for that yin yang apprentice. Let me tell you, the next episode is yin yang apprentice. I'm going right back into it. All right. I had to take a break from all the agents and double agent stuff and freaking demon resurrections just so we could get a little bit, you know, astrologically sound. Like if you notice, I, I'm trying not to go to textbook into the zodiac signs because I'm saving that for other videos. But this is the, the World War Zero slant kind of gives you all an occult view, a hidden view, right? That's why, as you'll see in future slides. Uh, but yeah, just just keep keep in mind we're going back into the deep abstract concepts next episode. Yin Yang apprentices. We're gonna talk about Scorpio and the Demon Clan. We're gonna talk about Capricorn and the Goddess Clan. Like it's it's going down, folks. It's going down. Things things are prepared. But rambling aside, <laughs> Taurus represents real love. All right. So this this is the most underestimated sign in the zodiac all right when you think about love you should think leo and we'll get to that in the next slide but the foundation of that is real love taurus is the expression of what you consider valuable all right you only truly love something you value and this is why at its most basic we express this in a barter system that's real love. Anything that you would, you would really, it, it's, it's a very basic way to think because people equate love in the Leo way where you have to add the cancer element because we're, we're just Taurus. This is just Aries that it proceed, proceeds. So we haven't gotten to Gemini cancer yet where Leo is, where you were talking about love, you know, as we know it, but we always have to consider Taurus. All right. Taurus is the real love if we take away if we take i'm just talking on a currency aspect the real love with taurus is why taurus will always be committed because this is the basic level of love any relationship needs where you are committed to somebody you value you value them you respect them very basic shit. but when you bring the currency level into it this is what really runs the world. This is why this is Capricorn's fifth house. <laughs> okay. Uh, but this is, uh, like I said, the basic level of love, real love, all right? When, when the Leo and the Scorpio and the Aquarius, you know what I'm saying? When, when you're not able to access them, you will still always have Taurus. All right, Taurus will always be there. No other sign will always be there. Don't expect Gemini's ass to always be there. We're never always there. We're like here and then there and then somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Don't expect Aries ass to be with you. They got to go places. Okay. I'm saying Taurus will always be there. It's the fixed earth. And that's what makes it so underestimated because it represents real possessions. And it's so easy to be taken for granted. But enough about that boring stuff. Let's get to the awesome love. The love everybody craves. The love everybody craves, but most people swear they don't need because they don't want to be vulnerable. Magical love, Leo. Why do I call this magical? Is it because I'm delusional and in a fantasy world? No, if you remember, I said in the last episode that cancer was magic power, all right? The magic they don't want you to harness. Please keep in mind, people, I do assert and claim, I know people say we're in the age of Aquarius and I do believe that. I do assert and will always claim, I don't have um, um, facts for what I'm about to say too. It's not, sorry, I do have facts, but um, I don't have any proof about what I'm about to say, but I always claim that humanity has barely just mastered the Gemini vibration. What does that mean? Humanity has finally uh, been able to master communication that's it we're not we we once we get into social dynamics that's virgo and libra we're not even close to mastering that 
all right? That's why corporations will pimp out whole places of residence so that they can expand what they have to do. That's why people still kill each other, all right? If we're talking about mastering, all we've really mastered is communication, being able to express our thought. And, and we've come a long way. We've come a long way just mastering Gemini. All right, so in an age of Aquarius that has a lot to do with higher level genius and technology, as we master cancer, which we're, we're barely mastering cancer, this is where we, we blend the communication we learn in Gemini and be sincere with our emotions. And because we're still working through it, we're going to have to deal with insincerity, right? But also distorted feelings. This is a very hard energy to master because it squares the first lesson we learned, Aries, and now we have to be truly accountable for the identity we claim we are. So when we get to Leo with magical love, this is the love that you express at someone at a heart level, all right? This is what makes Leo superpower. I say uh, humanity kind of ends at Ge Gemini and then superhumans start at Cancer and Leo because anybody with their son in Leo is able to connect with people at a heart level. It doesn't even have to be romantic. Their seventh house is the house of friendship, Aquarius. So they're able, if you're around the Leo, they're able to open their heart. That's why an unbalanced Leo are one of the worst people to be around because their hearts are not balanced. And then they take all of this powerful fire and they burn everything. But either way, the, the magic part of what makes Leo so magical, like I said, is the connection of the heart chakras. Something that, you know, kind of goes... It's, it's hard for it to go unnoticed because it's your goddamn heart chakra being connected. But, you know, of course, some people who naturally have hearts closed, it's not like they walk up to people and open your heart. You know, if, you're, if you close yourself off willingly, you're going to close yourself off to the magic. But you want to think of, like, that Disney energy. Leo is associated with youth, undergraduate education, art. Well, that's Libra, too, but art. And, uh, you know, children, because that's, that's, the, that's, in a sense, the youthful love. Even though Leo can be anything but innocent and youthful, this is, this is the beginning of love that, with the passion of fire, turns into sex, which is going to be very important when we get into the, this love. All right, so... Like I said, we're, we're, we're not even close to... Ma Once we master Leo, this is when like half of humanity is just going to be on some super psychic shit because now their heart chakra is open and they've balanced their emotions with their mind. All right? This is, this is when like we're going to be a much more advanced society. But we have to get through the turbulent waters of cancer. People will die. That's what cancer and, and water is all about. Um, that's just so dark to say. And of course, cancer is a dark sign. We do like to lighten up things, but that's what Leo is for. Leo is the magical love that comes from the source. All right. And it, it shines bright like the sun. I hate to say something so cliche. There's something in my heart that I'm trying to say right now, but it's kind of being obscured. It's like a, a secret that wants to come out, but can't. And, and that secret is the link between Leo and Scorpio. And it has a lot to do with the connection of where Leo is sex on a very fun level. And that bridges into Scorpio, which is sex on a soul level. All right. The last thing I will say about Leo is the karmic soulmate is Scorpio because they share Pisces. Um, but that's a future World War Zero episode when I talk about the karmic connections, which... Let me know if you want me to do that after the Yin Yang Apprentice. That one's going to be one of the best episodes ever. I promise you. 
But yeah, solo. This is really hard to talk about because a lot of humanity is not ready at all for half of the truth of, of Scorpio. There's some things that I can't even say about Scorpio. You have to understand the vibration of secrecy, hiddenness, the occult, that's Scorpio. It's hidden. You know what I'm saying? That's why Gemini is their eighth house. We bring the truth out of that, but we can't, there's certain things you can't shed light on or will not be a cult anymore. I hope that makes sense. So there are just certain things that when you get to this, and this is what makes Scorpio so misunderstood. There, it's impossible to understand Scorpio. They are an enigma. Like that's their vibration. It's literally impossible. And th this is very expressive of the love that they express. This is taking the magical love of Leo and taking it to the realms of gods and goddesses, all right? Of course, in this lower vibrational uh, dimension, most people are not even going to be aware of it. So they're only aware of the lower vibration of the Scorpio energy which um, doesn't really come across as anything because these are extreme lovers. So they're always going to be on a high vibration. And people with lower vibrations cannot sense people with higher vibrations. Doesn't work that way. So they, it, there, there's always going to be difficulty with connection there. But, you know, Scorpio does not, with Pluto, reveal those secrets. They meet people at that higher vibration. So what makes this so love... Now, let me, I'm sorry, let me track back. Let me track back because I did say this is the uh, axis of currency and this is a, a, a currency, like fun, pleasurable experiences, all right? Um, actually having courage and having attention, that is a, a very powerful currency. A lot of people spend money. They, they will trade real assets for attention. If they buy like a, a new watch or a new clothes, some people are very tourist centric. They buy those possessions because, you know, they buy it with the function of using it for a realistic purpose. Someone may buy a watch and a shirt because they know it's going to give them the right attention and it's going to put them in higher places. Then you have Scorpio which is the love you express uh, with somebody you could be completely vulnerable to. Like it's one thing to share a real connection with someone, a basic commitment that lasts. Another thing to share a magical connection at the heart level. It's uh, where you're, you're having fun. You're connecting with someone emotionally and mentally. And it's like, you're you're with your best friend and then there's another thing entirely when you're just connecting with someone completely naked like you don't have clothes on that other person doesn't have clothes on and it's like nothing it's like it, you're not even ashamed that you're both naked like adam and eve that's scorpio love that's the eighth house that's the love that you express to it, it's sacred to nobody it that why that's why it trines the 12th house of isolation all right it's 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 forbidden love really this is the energy of the demon clan this is why when we talk about scorpio and the demon resurrection oh goodness so it's hard to express these concepts in you know a time like now where the eighth house is still taboo you know what i mean and 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 you know, sexual rituals, that's all Scorpio. Could you really, could you realistically talk to anybody now about uh, doing a sexual ritual without them being like, huh, what's that? So, I mean, <laughs> you know, so love. This is where, this is next to Sagittarius. This is after the gateways of God. This is where the alchemy of two polarities get together and transform and more shit that i can't say because it's literally forbidden which takes us to aquarius i i made this the last one so you love this did it no but <clears throat> um let me track back because like i said 
This is the most, this is the most sought after currency. The underworld, remember, secrecy, sex, sex. You're gonna, you, you, can, you can break this down to different stuff like intimacy, you know what I'm saying? But honestly, it's really sex. It's the currency that you get with sex. The person with the most sexual power literally has the most power. And I, I ooh, let me break this down for you. If, if the person with the most money in the world walked into the room and then you had the most creative person with the, the most powerful heart power and then you had the person with the most sexual demand, like they have the most sexual demand, they can have sex with whoever they want. You know what I'm saying? It's not about having sex with whoever you want or the most, but they have that Mars and Pluto sexual power, all right, which is a currency in itself. Who would have the most currency if your answer was aquarius you're correct i mean it, scorpio is the exception but it's actually aquarius and i left this blank what kind of love is aquarius i'm going to give you some time to actually uh guess that while i type that out Cosmic love, and this is the highest octave of love. This is this is maybe humanity in 5,000 to 10,000 years, but due to the exponential, since we're in the Aquarian age, due to the exponential level of uh, human growth, we could easily achieve this in like uh, less than a thousand years. You know what I mean? Like less than 500 years. It's not going to happen that way, and it's not because uh, humanity is, can't reach the level of Aquarius. There's just certain events that are going to happen. I mean, I keep trying to tell y'all this is spiritual war. So there's just going to be things that happen that stunt the growth, you know, and, and cause things to move at a slower rate than could be. But Aquarius is, bar none, the highest octave of love. And this, rep, you know, and, and, and something to add on this zodiac sign there's certain zodiac signs that you're you are incarnate in you're timeless so it doesn't matter if you know you're not uh in the new age because you are new age for example aquarius aquarius could be 1855 but if you if you took a time machine and took that aquarius from 1855 and bring them to 2000 20 they could still adapt just like gemini because they're timeless they think progressively like they, they they're not going to be like a taurus who completely just gets frazzled by the change and the old ways of doing things you know what i mean like they, they some people are time so keep that in mind but yeah this is the highest octave of love indicative of in the most basic form friendship the connections that you have Aquarius is universal, right? So I, I don't want you to put in a box this cosmic energy and say that it's only just about humanity. You know what I'm saying? Which is just like believing, it's just like believing that in an infinite universe, we are the only life species here. Do you know how many galaxies there are, but we're the only ones? Don't ever say that around an Aquarius or they will just like lose all respect for you. All right, like straight up. This is why I say Aquarius is the sign of extraterrestrials. This is this is this is the energy of reaching out in your you know in your community and humanity. But it's really the energy of stretching out galactically because Aquarius is the universe and contacting extraterrestrials. Um, on the real, there's humans, there's gods and goddesses. Aquariuses are extraterrestrials. Yeah, they're in the human body, but their consciousness is like alien. It's, it's completely not of this world, all right? So this is cosmic love. This is like the highest octave of love in the sense where you could have sex with a platonic friend and it's nothing. It's, it's not, this is, we're not even there in society. Like people are put in the friend zone and sex is used in a Torian way. Not even a Torian way. Anyway. But sex is used manipulatively to either fulfill desires or to, you know, control others instead of it being an intimate connection. 
because sex at the Aquarian level is where you get swinger parties, which is more Sagittarian, but really, you know, casual sex where sex is had in a detached manner. It's conceptual. It's just a thing you do. You know what I'm saying? You, you could have sex with a friend, whereas you can have sex with a more serious partner. And that it's a very, that's a very air concept. But, you know, some people listen to this and are like, oh, yeah, especially if, if you have Venus in Aquarius, Mars in Aquarius, like you get this, like instinctually. That's where humanity is headed. All right. All the Pluto and Sag, Pluto and Capricorn people being born down and, and the future Pluto and Aquarius is that's what they're going to do. All right. They're going to have people when we're 50, when we're 40, like, what the hell are these kids doing? But it's very progressive. You know what I mean? And then, of course, this is just universal love. This is where love gets expressed um, at a universal level and, and two people's higher selves get involved or more more than two, actually, you know, the, the, the full, you know, I can't honestly, I can't even speak on it because it's just such a higher concept as opposed to Taurus, which is the microcosm, which is just, you know, very literal, very real. This is why Taurus and Aquarius are karmic soulmates, as we'll get in the future episode. So that's World War Zero. Like I said, the fixed signs are the most sought after. Um, I don't know if I did say that, but they are the most sought after. They're the currency. They're what you want, all right? This is love. <laughs> and they play a very uh, important role in this war. Uh, to the point where they don't have to even be involved. Like Leo is just in the cut chilling. Um, Virgo and Gemini and Scorpio is involved because Scorpio uh, doesn't want to be played, I guess. But Leo is so important. They're just in the cut chilling with Taurus. Like they, they could be neutral because their existence is so vital. Nobody, you can't really be against them or for them. They don't even have to be involved. All right, it's really just due to fixed nature, and Aquarius uh, is low key. But I, I, I won't, I won't even get to that. Um, that was the fixed episode of the zodiac. I mean, fixed signs of the zodiac. And next episode, we're gonna get into the yin yang apprenticeship with the yin yang twins. <laughs>